You ready? Ready? Good day, everyone. And it's good to be with the brethren. Um, we were asked to go through the seven feast days, so we're going to try to do that. It'll be kind of quick because our time is limited. We want to emphasize as a school in our church that came by way of a divine vision and revelation given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the year 1931. And since that time, he said what really happened, he received Joshua Messiah. He said, don't believe me. I had a divine vision and revelation from the Creator. Don't believe me, but make me prove it to your satisfaction. And that still rings true today. Now, the, this chart that we have here is the second chart that he had painted, and it's called the Series Number One. It was done in 1946. And the 40 plates, the 1946, it's series number two. And the elementary chart was the first one he had done. So we're just using these three charts because our space and camera is limited at this time. Now before, you know, Joshua Messiah began at Moses. Why did he begin at Moses? Because it's Moses that he showed, he gave his name to. First man to learn the name of Yahweh was Moses at the burning bush in Exodus, the third chapter. And he tells him, you tell the children of Israel that Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, the Elohim of Jacob, sent me unto you, this is my name forever. And a memorial throughout all generations. And he came down and he gave him signs and wonders. He told him he was Ayah after Ayah, which means I will be what I will to be. And in and then he sent him down into the land of Egypt, and there were ten devastating plagues. And on the, the tenth plague, Yahweh set up time with the children of Israel. And, and this is before Yahweh gave feast days to Israel. And you see that he's going by a timetable. He tells him that uh, in Exodus, the twelfth chapter, it says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, and we have it on the chart there, he even has Exodus 12 and 1 there. <laughs> this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. He's speaking to the Israelites. Let every man take a lamb. The lamb have, must be without spot, without blemish. It shall be a male lamb of the first year. See? And when they got him being uh, born in December, you know, when April comes around, that ain't a lamb of the first year. That lamb's only three or four months old. So it definitely... Uh, but if he was born June, like we're, we'll show you or we'll talk about, then by the time April comes, that lamb's about 10 months old. That's a lamb of the first year. The lamb had to be without spot and without blemish. They had to take the lamb out on April the 10th, hold it over for four days, and kill it on the evening of the 14th. That's the Passover lamb for them to come up out of Egypt, land of Egypt. But Yahshua Messiah said in 1 Corinthians 5... And seven, it says, Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may breed bread of a new baking. For the Messiah, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. He's the Passover lamb. And in John 1 29, John the Baptist saw Yahshua see, and said, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. And where this lamb was killed on the first month, the 14th day of the month of the Hebrew calendar, it's showing Yahshua Messiah was crucified on the 14th day of the first month. See, the Passover is talking about the Lamb of Yahweh, which is Yahshua Messiah. It's going to die for the sin of the world. The children of Israel were in bondage, and the Lamb had to die before they can be delivered. And it was a two, and it was a three-day journey to and through the Red Sea. So they, they had to kill the Lamb. They had to take the Lamb and strike it on the lintel of the door, the two side posts, and dip in the basin below, making four points of blood on the door frame. And when Yahshua Messiah comes in, in John 10 and 9, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall find good pasture. And that's going by a pattern here, see? Because you've got a door right here in the fourth step of the pattern. And you have the high priest would go in through the gate. That's the first step. He would kill a sacrifice. Uh, that's a death, see? And that was a, and it was a lamb in the morning and a lamb in the evening. Lamb in the morning, representing around uh, uh, nine in the morning, and lamb in the evening, about three in the afternoon. And that's how long Yahshua Messiah was on the cross from nine to three. See, being the, being that sacrifice for sin. 
And so he's fulfilling both that lamb in the morning, lamb in the evening, which is, uh, I believe that's uh, Exodus 29, 38. But you've got to do that continually, day by day, continually. Every day they had to kill those, showing that Yahshua Messiah, he, he's the daily sacrifice. He's the one sacrificed in Cyprus. But he stopped the daily sacrifice when he died. Because it was all pointing out him. See, just like they killed this lamb and had to eat it, you have to believe and, 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 and feast on the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And as we're going to get into, the first three feast days are April 14th, Feast of Unleavened, I mean, Feast of uh, the Passover. And Yahshua is the Passover, and he died on the 14th. They had to kill that lamb. And, it, and, they had, and they had to eat it in the evening. See, when Yahshua died, the Passover lamb, he was killed and the sun went down. So that showed the evening that he's fulfilling. Then April 15th was Feast of Unleavened Bread. They see, Yahshua Messiah said in John 6, 35, I am the living bread. I am the bread of life. He that believed in me, though he were dead, or no, he that believed in me shall never hunger. But he that comes to me shall never hunger. He that believes me shall never thirst. That's John 6, 35. And so when Yahshua Messiah, being the true bread of Yahweh, when he died, when he was planted in the tomb, he's unleavened. He hadn't risen yet. So he's fulfilling unleavened bread on April the, or the first month, the 15th day of the month. And then he resurrected early Sunday morning, which would have been April 16th or the first month, the 16th day, which is showing that's the feast of the first fruits, and that's the first fruits of the barley harvest. All the feast days are based around the the the, the harvest of the crops to show you that they resurrected and poured out fruit to show you Yahshua Messiah died, buried, resurrected, and in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, 20, it said he's the first fruits of them that slept. See, representing that he's the one that resurrected. And he resurrected on the third day. See, he's fulfilling back here that, the, that, that in the days of creation, the earth without form and void. It's in a death state, just like the Passover. Then the earth still covered over with water. That's showing it's buried, like under the Feast of, uh, of uh, Unleavened Bread. And then on the third day, that's when life came forth. The plants come forth on the third day. Dry land appears, just like the stone rolled away. Yahshua Messiah resurrected when said he resurrected. And it says on the third day that those, those, those uh, plants come forth, herb yielding seed after his kind, tree yielding fruit after his kind. Why is it his kind? Because it's telling you how he's going to resurrect. He's going to resurrect the spirit body. The, 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 the plants don't have flesh and blood. So it's telling you how he's going to resurrect. So his first three feast days are April 14, 15, 16. It's showing you the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, how you can feast on that. And that will bring you out of bondage. See, it was, it was Adam ate food and that brought man down. In, you always say, don't eat. That brought man into death. So it's the eating that brings you out. And it's the believing of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. So they had, they had to eat to get out of Egypt. <laughs> you understand? They had to eat the Passover. That's a death. Then they were buried in the cloud and the sea. The lambs buried them. They resurrect in the wilderness. So in a type and a shadow, how they, how, how they were delivered was by the death of the lamb. They were buried in the cloud and the sea. They resurrect in the wilderness. Through a death, burial, resurrection, they were delivered. Showing that true soul salvation, you are delivered through the gospel of Yahshua. How he died, how he was buried, and how he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. And then they had to put the blood on the four points of the door. So there's four points of blood on Yahshua. They had to pierce the lamb in the side to get the blood out. And so they had to pierce him inside after he's dead. See, then, then they go to the waters and Yahweh divides the waters, rolls them back. See, just like the stone rolled away. And, and, and they resurrected through the divided waters. They're showing a death, burial, resurrection. Or you got the blood of the lamb, the divided water of the Red Sea, then the, then the waters heap up in a tunnel and the, the angel in the clouds leading them that spirit. So they're delivered by blood, water, spirit. That's how a physical body is delivered is by blood, water, spirit. They were thrust out of the land of Egypt just like that baby thrust out of mama's womb. And, say, and baby comes forth as blood, water, spirit. And see, this tall testifying to Yahshua the Messiah how that when he died on the cross he shed his blood for the remission of sins. Then they pierced him out Pierced them in the side, out came blood and water. 
and then he resurrected a quickening, life-giving spirit. And it's by the preaching and the understanding and knowing what Yahshua the Messiah did, that's what will free you from spiritual bondage. That the devil been lying to you all your life, telling you got to uh, eat physical things to be saved. When he's the one that fulfilled those things and nailed it to his cross. See, now, so what you got is you got, they were, deli- they were delivered uh, two days, to and through the Red Sea. They, so that's showing a resurrection of the children of Israel. A whole bunch of people resurrecting on the third day. Showing that when Yahshua Messiah died, they resurrected. There was a whole bunch of souls that resurrected with him after his resurrection. He's the head, and, and that's the body. See? And 50 days later, after he uh, delivered them, he spoke down the Ten Commandment Law. And that was June 6th. See? Now, if you want to get some... uh, You're going to have to write these down. And here we go. So, Exodus 12 chapter. And then Exodus 13 and 4. It says, This month came ye out in the month of Abib. That month, Abib... Is, equiv- is likened unto our April, right around that time. It's not exactly because they're on a lunar calendar, but that's the first month of the year, according to the Bible, is April. And it begins with an A, just like the first man, Adam, begins with an A. The first building block of matter is an Atom, beginning with an A. The first high priest in the tabernacle was Aaron, got two A's in his name. That means light. See, that's why January can't... January's the 10th month. Matter of fact, we got that on here. Here, this is the Hebrew calendar. We got all them lined up there: April one, May two, June third, July fourth, August five, September six, October seven, November eight, December nine, ten January, eleven February, and March is the twelfth month. See, those are the twelfth months of the Bible calendar, and that's why when you're going to talk about the seasons of the year, and when you look up season. See, when you look up season, it's it's see a sun. That's what you want to see. And it was Yahshua and Messiah. And it's how the earth is in relationship to the sun that makes the seasons of the year. See, and it's a 23 degree tilt of the earth. <laughs> you say, well, why is he doing all that? You understand? Because back here, you got that Yahshua died on a Friday. That's 1,000. He dies a He's buried in the tomb. you got 2,000 written there. And he resurrects early in the morning. That's a 2,300 day. That's, in the, uh, that's showing the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua. And it says in Daniel 8, 14, after 2,300 days, then the sanctuary will be cleansed because he was taking the sin of the world upon himself. And, and he took that sin on and it was a sacrifice for the sin of the world. He's, then he dies and he's buried. See? And then when he resurrects, he don't resurrect with the same body, so that's him cleansing the sanctuary. You understand? His body is spiritual now. See? Okay. So when they, uh, so April, they come up out of the land of Egypt, just like on the sea, April 14, 15, 16, or first month, 14, 15, 16, that's showing his death, burial, resurrection on the third day. See? And then you read in Exodus 16 chapter. It'll say the second month, the 15th day of the month. That's when Yahweh rained down the manna to the children of Israel in May, the second month. So you got to get the Bible calendar right. And then right here, when you, you, that's why you know Moses wrote the Genesis, because they didn't know the time of the year before that. Yahweh's instituted and given it to Moses, and he tells in uh, and, and Genesis 7, 11, it said, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, that's when the fountains of the deep broke up and the windows of heaven come. That's when the flood was, was May 17th. And then here you got, that's a raining down. And then you got Yahweh raining down manna on May 15th. You see how it all it correlates together there? See? And then, and then in that's Genesis 6, I mean, Exodus 16. Exodus 12, you've got April, first month. Then they, they got went through the Red Sea. They're in the wilderness, and he rains down manna on May the 15th, the second month. Then you've got Exodus 19 and 1. It says, When the children of Israel come forth out of the land of Egypt, they came to Mount Sinai in the, on the third month. 
It says the same day. So what would be the third month and the same day? Well, the third month and the same day. So third month, that's June. And when it says same day, it's the same day as it is the month. So it's June 3rd. So when it said same day, so when it said third month, same day, same day. That means it came on the third day, so that's June 3rd. And he tells them in 9 and 10 to wash up and clean up. This is, uh, this is 19 and 10 of Exodus. He, told, he was told to tell the children of Israel to wash up and clean up. For on the third day, he's going to speak his law down to the children of Israel's hearing. So all you got to do is take June 3rd, add 3, and you get June 6th. That's when he spoke the Ten Commandment law down from a cloud. And that began the fourth dispensation. When you look over here on the dispensations and ages here, see, right here is what we've been talking about with that story of Moses. See? And, matter of fact, you had seven feast days. See? Uh, well, okay. So, right there, showing the death, burial, and resurrection of the children of Israel coming up out of the land of Egypt. And Yahweh speaking down the Ten Commandment law, those are the first four feast days in Yahweh's. Uh, it, the feast days are in Leviticus 23. And right around the fifth verse, he says, well, on the, fir the, uh, the first month, the 14th day of the month, you shall have the Passover. So the Passover is on what we consider April the 14th, since April is our first month of the year. Then second, feast day, it said the next day that you, that the, after the 14th is, is going to be a Sabbath, and no manner of work shall be done. And that's the feast of unleavened bread. And so, you know, they ate unleavened bread when they ate the Passover back here. So they didn't know about the feast days and Yahweh's having to eat the Passover. And the Passover was roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. See, that was on the menu. And then we, when, we came in the, when, we came, when we came in from the church, all they got going on at the church are two things on the menu. You understand? Uh, sometimes crackers and grape juice or bread and grape juice. And if you're a uh, Mormon, it's water and bread. You understand? Two things on the menu. That means they're dead and buried. You've got to have three things because he died, buried, and resurrected. And plus, they had a whole lamb. It was a feast because they wasn't going to eat nothing for three days. Then you go to that church, pay 10% of your money, and he's going to feed you a little piece of cracker and grape juice and call that the Lord's Supper. You see how, you see how you've been tricked and fooled. And, and Yahweh has brought you into this school to let you learn about him. And there's no reason. As a matter of fact, it says that in Galatians, the fourth chapter, about ninth verse or tenth verse. He said, You observe days, months, and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I bestowed my labor in vain. And people do still observe days, especially Christmas. December 25th. Merry Christmas. That's when Jesus was born. Jesus wasn't, there ain't no such thing as Jesus. And plus, he wasn't born. <laughs> the Savior wasn't born in December. That's the burial time of year. That's when John the Baptist was buried. And maybe we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, so now, the third feast day, what they'll talk about in uh, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, it'll talk about the morrow after the Sabbath. And just like April 14th, you always read about, it says right on the chart there that it's a Friday when he died. That's the sixth day of the week. And then the seventh day, he's in the tomb all that Sabbath. That's how he fulfilled the Sabbath, because no manner of work shall be done. And so when he's dead and he's buried in the tomb, he wasn't doing no work. It was talking about him after he died and buried. He didn't do no manner of work. That's how he fulfilled the Sabbath. No work shall be done on Sabbath day. His eyes ain't blinking. His heart ain't beating. See? And then, so he fulfilled the Sabbath day. And then he resurrected 
early on the morning, see, uh, on the 16th, see, showing that that's a resurrection, see, and that there's a resurrection on the third. The earth's the third planet from the sun is the only one that gives life, showing that Yahshua the Messiah, he's that, he, the Holy Spirit, is your only hope of glory. That is your eternal life, is Yahshua the Messiah in you, and that's, and that, and, 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 and he can, he can resurrect you for the first time in your life after you've been deceived all your life. So April 14, 15, 16, showing the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. And yes, we do repeat things. So that he's the first, so that was the, that was the first fruit. And you know what they did with the first fruit? They had the heave offering and the wave offering, and it was the barley harvest. And that's Yahshua the Messiah resurrecting, and then he showed himself. So that's like the wave offering that the high priest did. See, he's appearing to people to show you that he's resurrected from the dead. You understand? And the fourth, and then so it says the morrow after the Sabbath. So that was the Sunday. That's the day after the Sabbath. So that's why you know it's the 16th. So when you read that, it's the morrow after the Sabbath. And it'll say the first fruit. So the Sabbath was the 15th, and then the morrow after the Sabbath is 16. Then they tell you to number seven Sabbaths, which seven times seven is 49. Then the next day is when you're going to have uh, the fourth feast day. And what that is, it would be the third month, the sixth day, just like we just showed. That's when he spoke the Ten Commandment Law down. That also started the fourth dispensation. When he spoke the law down, that, that's what they say with the Mosaic law. And there's a place in there, and John, and John writes that in John 1.17. The law come by Moses, but grace and truth come by Yahshua the Messiah. You understand? See, that's the fourth dispensation when you had the law of sin. That's the law of sin and death. Something sin, you got to die. And that's what happened with Adam. Yahweh gave him a law, he sinned, and he died in his conscience. And that brought the whole thing down into a death-like state. So it takes, and mankind was buried in that condemnation and it took Yahshua Messiah to die, bury, be the sacrifice for sin, be the Passover. He's going to pass over from death unto life. That's the gospel. It's showing that there's life after death, and it's only through Yahshua the Messiah. See? And so that that. That fourth dispensation started with them coming up out of the land of Egypt, and then uh, with the lamb being killed, and that's what he says in Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-one. He said, "Behold, the day come." That's six hundred years for the Savior coming. They had the law for nine hundred years, and he said, "Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand." So he said, not according to the covenant when I made with their fathers, when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, was my covenant break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. See, their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. Now, when are you going to go down and get that new pair of shoes going to last 40 years? You understand? <laughs> Yahweh took care of them, is what's all that saying there. And he spoke that law down there on June the 6th. That began the fourth... Uh, Dispensation. Yahweh's telling Jerem- through Jeremiah, he's saying, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel, house of Judah. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt with my covenant break on as a husband on them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the. They broke that covenant. They built a golden calf. They worshiped other things. They broke the Sabbath day. They did all- the first Sabbath day in, Je- in Exodus 16, they broke it. They went out there looking for the manna, and it wasn't, you know. Yahweh said, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments? That's why in Exodus 20 and uh, 8, it says, remember the Sabbath, because it was already given to him on the 16th. And he said, you're going to make a new covenant, not like the old one. So if he had the Sabbath under the old one, they had sacrifices under the old one, they had baptism and washing under the old one, they had tithes and offerings under the old one, they had feast days under the old one, and that means the new one can't have that. So he's going to make a new one, not like the old one. And before you can make a new one, you've got to get rid of the old one. And that's why Yahshua Messiah came in. See, was to fulfill those things. See? All right. 
So June 6th, that began the fourth feast day, or the fourth dispensation. And you know what? Just like, <laughs> well, we'll do it this way. The fifth feast day is October 1st, and that's Feast of Trumpets. June 6th is called the Feast of Weeks. But later on, you know it now as Pentecost. Because Pentecost, Pente, Pente means 50. So it's 50 days from when the Feast of First Fruits was. And see, one of the simple ways of doing that is April 16th. If you add 60 days, what you'll get is June. 16. And then since you want 50 days, Pentecost is 50, because there's your 50, it said you do seven weeks of Sabbath, and then you add one more day, and that's how you get 50. So if I add 60 days to this, because April 16th would be the uh, 30 days from that's May 16th, and 30 more days would be June 16th. Now, uh, that was with 60 days, but I need 50, so all i got to do is subtract 10. And that's an easy way to get June 6th. Okay? But also, if Joshua the Messiah, <clears throat> when he died, buried, resurrected, he tarried 40 days making spiritual appearances. So when it said he tarried 40 days, well, how do I get 40 days from June I mean, April 16th. Well, I just, first I'd probably just do, add 30 days. <laughs> 30 days to give you May 16th. Then I just add 10 more days to 16. Just add 16 plus 10. You'll get May 26th. What's that? Well, he tarried 40 days. That's 30 plus 10. That's when he ascended. And ten days later, pours out the Holy Spirit. So when you take May 26 and add ten, that's how you get June 6. So another June 6. Now May 26. Oh, and remember, we told you that the flood during Noah's time was May 17. And if you do 40 days from that, you'll get. June 27. It, it rained from May 17 to June 27. And right in the middle, that's June 6. And so he ended this age with the flood on May 17. Then he ends this age. He ascends on May 26 and pours out the Holy Spirit on June 6. See him ending it right between that time span, right around the same time as Noah. See? Because he ascended on May 26th and poured out the Holy Spirit June 6th, see? Okay, I know I kind of run out of time, put a lot of stuff on the board here. Okay? Okay. Uh, now, so October 1st is the Feast of Trumpets, see? And this is all uh, feast days, Leviticus 23, see? So you can check these things out and read it for yourself. See? And on June 6th, you know what? They could eat leavened bread that day. Why could they eat leavened bread on that day? And that's the first fruit of the wheat harvest. So it's all, that's based on the harvesting, too. See, it's based on you eating something. And that's what you get the harvest for, so you have something to eat. See? And they can eat leavened bread on June 6th for the Feast of Week. Showing that Yahshua Messiah died, buried, resurrected. He's risen. And you know what's the difference between unleavened bread and leavened bread? It's yeast. And you spell yeast with Y and East, showing he's Yahshua from the East. And when you look at the tabernacle, it says in uh, Psalms 19 and 4, He hath set a tabernacle for the sun. And, and so this uh, uh, death, burial, resurrection gets you in the Holy 
place. Well, the, well, where the altar and the labor and all that, that's on the east. That's the east part of the tabernacle. So that's the sun rising in the east when you have a death, burial, resurrection. Doesn't the sun rise in the east? And then it sets in the west. See? And uh, that was Joshua the Messiah setting in man's heart and mind on June 6th. See? And June is the, uh, well, okay, the fifth feast day is October 1st, Feast of Trumpets. The sixth feast day is October 10th, which is Day of Atonement. Atonement. At one minute. And then the last one is the uh, seventh feast day is October 15 through 22, uh, eight day feast, and that's the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? Now, if you look at about a pattern, the pattern got seven steps, don't it? See? Seven steps of the pattern. And I think you're familiar with the the gate's the first step. The altar's the second step. The labor's the third step. The door's the fourth step. The fifth step's the whole holy place. Sixth step is the second veil divided between the most holy place and holy place. Seventh step is the, is the uh, most holy place. And you know somebody say, well, I don't believe nothing I can see. Well, I tell you what, they couldn't see inside that tabernacle like you see right there. <laughs> you can't see in your know why you couldn't see in there. You can't see inside your body and see your brain, can you? But you believe you got one, don't you? That's right. Yahweh made you by the pattern of the tabernacle. Now look how these seven feast days is going by the pattern because there's three compartments and seven feasts, and and here you got three times in a year. See, and what you got is you got June in the middle. And when they saw when they saw Yahweh Elohim at the end down here, he's in the midst of a seven branch lampstand. So you got April 14, 15, 16 on the first three branches. The middle branch, which feeds everything, that's right there, June 6, when he was born physically. See? The fourth son of Israel's named Judah. He was born. I mean, Judah is the fourth son of Israel. That's the kingship tribe, showing the king was going to come in on the fourth thousand year of time. Also, this son appeared to Moses in his vision on the fourth day to show you that Yahshua the Messiah is going to come in the year 4,000. See, and he instituted with the children of Israel as Joshua the son of Nun. So it's really Yahshua the son of Nun. And he came in the 400th year of the Abrahamic promise. This son appeared on the fourth day. Lamb held over for four days, showing Yahshua Messiah, the Lamb of Yahweh, held over for 4,000 years to come in to be the sacrifice for the sin of the world. And then he died, buried, resurrected, ascended. When he poured out the Holy Spirit, that began the fourth age, so he always comes in on the fourth. See? And so the same day he was born physically, which is June 6th, that's the same day man was born Spiritually. Okay, got to wind it up. Okay, so here we go. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, I guess I've learned this. I'm kind of new with this one. But I learned it. And so I, uh, uh, I share it. <laughs> and what this is, these months of the year, they're going by a pattern. And what you got is uh, the court roundabout. You got December, January, February. You got March on the veil here. You got April. You got May on the second veil. You got June in the most holy place. You got July in the most holy place. You got August. Then on the veil, there's September. Then you have October in the holy place. And then you have uh, November on the veil here. Now, if you look on this thing here, you see, well, I see the angel and Zechariah here. This is Zechariah when he comes to uh, uh, John the Baptist's father when he was a priest. And that was in the month of April. 
<laughs> and he told him he's going to have a child. And then when the angel came to Joshua in Luke one twenty six, and see there's angels on these veils. See the angels on these veils? Second veil, first veil. Angels on the veil. Angel comes to... Well, see we say April's the first month of the year and you say, well, why isn't it down here? Because these are holy days. They're the feast days, so they're in the holy place and the most holy place. You understand? So, April, uh, and so, uh, so, and see, when Joshua dies, buries, resurrects, that's the gospel being preached. It said, in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, for witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. When you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoke of Daniel prophet, stand in the holy place. When Yahweh brought them out of the land of Egypt, we said that began the new covenant that started in this age of time. See, from Adam to Noah, that's like the court roundabout, the antediluvian age. That's like the court roundabout age of time. Then the holy place is right here. That's when he set up April as the first month of the year. That's when he gave them the old covenant. You understand? That's when Yash the Messiah walked around. So that's when John the Baptist, that's when that angel appears to John the Baptist, and that's when Moses was told April's the first month of the year. Right there in the holy place, according to the ages in time. Then June's the most holy place. Didn't they, don't they put the table of stone in the most holy place? The new covenant, the day of Pentecost. See the same? See, they killed a the lamb, death on uh, in April the 14th. They were buried in the clouds of the sea. They resurrected in the wilderness. Death, burial, resurrection. Fifty days later from the resurrection, June 6th, the law is spoken down. It's showing Yahshua the Messiah. He said, the scripture testify me. He dies on April the 14th. He's buried all the 50th. He resurrects on the 16th. Fifty days later, he pours out the Holy Spirit. June 6th, starting the new covenant. He puts the Holy Spirit in their heart and in their mind. And then you have three feast days in October. So that angel in Luke one twenty six, it says, and the angel appeared unto Mary and says that she's going in the sixth month the angel come unto the uh, city of Galilee and Nazareth and to a virgin, a spouse to a man and says, says uh, Yahweh's highly a favor of you and you're going to have a son of the Holy Spirit. Then Luke one thirty six says, says and, and, and the angel tells her, see, angel tells her, your cousin Elizabeth is six months pregnant. So if she's six months pregnant, three days, le- three months later, and didn't they hold over Moses three months when he was hid from the death decree? So three months after the angel come, and you'll also read. Well, I better not do that. Well, I so they said he went up to the high country, and when they embraced, they're like the two archangels. Then that's when the that's when the uh, uh, that's when the, he got the Holy Spirit and the babe leaped in the womb. You understand? And he was filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. That was around there in September, see? Uh, and October. And then, 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 then she was with her for three months and then that's when Elizabeth had John the Baptist was in December. December 6th. Why 6th? Because the man come forth on the 6th day. See? John the Baptist's job was to bury the dead Jews in the labor down here in the court roundabout. So right where he's told, to, right where he's born, is showing what his mission is: is to bury the dead Jews. They had to confess their sin, and the wage of sin is death. And so he buried the dead Jews. So that's why he's born in December, which is the burial time of the year. See, but if you start in September and count nine months, October. One, two, three, November, December 3, January 4, February 5, March 6, 7, 8. The ninth month will come on June. Now, how, why do I do nine months? Because everything goes by a tabernacle, and this tabernacle, they spoke the law down on June, and instead, June 6, and then June, it was still the month of June. And Moses in his vision sees the days of creation. See? And the man come forth on the sixth day from virgin mother birth. How do I know that's true? Well, we're going to tell you one thing right now. You can never get a birthday for the Messiah. You say, well, wait a minute. I just heard you talk. Yep. Because when Yahweh came from pure spirit, 
and took on short shape and form as Elohim, that's a messianic body. And you can't put no month and day on that. <laughs> that's the day of eternity. He said He's the Son. That's the only begotten Son. That's, that's the day, because He called light day. And that birthday, you can't put no physical time on. But Yahshua the Messiah was born physically. Now what happened is, this tabernacle was shown to Moses in the month of June. And when Adam came forth, he came forth in his vision, being the first son of Yahweh, on the sixth day. So that's the principle of June 6th, him coming forth. And there were fruit on the tree. But now, this tabernacle in Exodus, the 40th chapter, was set up in April. Well, if, if, if June is when he saw it to him, and when he set it up was April 1st, which is April Fool. See how you've been fooled? You count nine months from that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. April 1st. That took nine months for the tabernacle. So you count nine months from when the angel comes to Mary. October's one. So there's June. And then he comes in on the sixth day. And then the sun appears on the fourth day. So he was born year 4,000. John the Baptist was born December 6th. You understand? Six months earlier. See, and then what happened was, Joshua lived 33 years. Died. So we know what happened on April 14, 4033. <laughs> he died, buried, resurrected. Fifty days later, the Holy Spirit was poured out June 6th, 4034. That was when the Holy Spirit was given to the Gentiles. Then June 6th, the Holy Spirit was given to the... No, given to the Israelites. That's when the day of Pentecost in Acts, the second chapter, was his 34th birthday, 4034. 4041, June 6th, that's when the Gentiles got the Holy Spirit, seven years later. Now, in our time, June 6th, 1960, 1931, is when Dr. Kinley got the divine vision and revelation. And, and that's when he was born of the Spirit. And then look at June. June's the third month, the sixth day. And here's the third age of time that we're in. And we're in the sixth dispensation. So it's time for you to be born. And you know what? We're getting ready. To, 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 uh, they're getting ready to, uh, well, the, fourth pre the 46th president of the United States. And it takes 46 chromosomes for you to be born physically. Ready to usher into the kingdom here. And so we're down at the end of the age, and it takes 46 chromosomes for you to be born, and showing that you need to be born spiritually. And, and we're in the third age of time, the sixth dispensation, so that's a principle of June 6th for you to be born of the Spirit, for your soul to be born into the kingdom. And it's by the preaching of the gospel. Uh, we, 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 I, I messed up and didn't have much time, so that's all the time we have. So we just want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, our Elohim, to Yahshua Messiah. Thank you. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah.